Hello everyone, meteorologist Danielle Giuliano here and meteorologist Mark Collins and we're going to be talking about the update for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. The latest updates coming out this week, Mark. So go ahead yeah. and start us off for what we're seeing here right now. So we heard from the two biggest agencies, Colorado State, which invented basically long range hurricane forecasting and NOAA. Both of these agencies reduced the amount of storms by one. So not a lot, but at least it's not going up, right? Yeah. And they're seeing some indications that it might not be as active, but they're still calling for an above normal season. And what would you say constitute it for everyone? What considers it above normal? Yeah, well, usually when there's La Nina in the Pacific cold water, it can enhance the amount of storms that we see during a, a typical season, which on an average year, you usually get about 14 named storms and seven hurricanes. Out of those seven, the ones that are the major ones, those bring the most type of damage with winds at 111 miles per hour or more. And they're forecasting four of those. So they haven't changed the amount of major storms, yeah. but they have reduced the amount of name storms by one. And we haven't had a lot of activity so far this season. And when season. you think about it, one, I mean, yeah. one does make a difference if that one does come towards you. That's the that's point, the, right? That's the yeah. point. Yeah. So, so with uh, 1992 during Hurricane Andrew, that was a Category 5 storm that came through South Florida in August. So up until August, there was nothing really going on, but it took that one storm and a lot of people remember it changed the landscape of South Florida. But this year we've seen a lot of dry, dusty air and that's kind of held back a lot of the storm activity. I was going to say the Atlantic Basin has been very quiet over the last few weeks. We've talked about the Saharan dust. We've talked about the dry air, but those yep. aren't the only implications right. choking off any sort of development. So what we're looking at is, you know, that dust is usually around it through July. But once we head towards August and September, those dust outbreaks start to go on the decline and that opens up the central Atlantic for storms. This is what we call the main development region where September and October you get the strongest hurricanes and then they tend to track and oftentimes affect the western Atlantic. But oftentimes there's another hot spot here in the Gulf of Mexico. So this is when the main part of the hurricane season really starts to ramp up and 90% of all of the named tropical systems usually form after August. So let's just look back to last year with Elsa. That was the only July storm. Now, granted, there were uh, like six storms up until then, but they were all fairly weak. Elsa, after, after Elsa, there was like a one month kind of a lull in the activity, yeah. similar to what we're in now. And people may remember Elsa. Elsa actually impacted us. That's when we had the two tornadoes yep. make its way through here. Granted, the center came nowhere near us, but with some of those outer bands, we still got the impacts, the tropical moisture right. and those spin-ups. In case of point, so with Elsa, it wasn't a major hurricane, nope. but it was enough to cause some flooding and, and some, some damage. damage here locally. So then we went for at least 31 days without a storm last year. And then by August 11th, we had uh, one storm that formed and then Ida, during that time period, there were six storms. Ida was this real powerful one that soaked uh, inland portions of the, the nation. Yeah. And, and that was a real uh, eye opener to how everyone's concerned about storm surge, but here the storm's exiting the other part of the country and it resulted in inland freshwater flooding. That's a big yeah, concern. Yeah, Ida's too. one of those storms too that started off kind of pretty small, went over the Gulf Loop, went through rapid intensification, and then bam, slammed into Louisiana. But all of the water deaths were up across the Northeast from all the flooding and the rain. So when we talk about water being the leading cause here of deaths due to tropical systems. It's not just storm surge, although that is one. It's the rain and the flooding for those inland areas of those people that say, oh, I'm not along the coast. It doesn't impact me. Yeah. That is wrong, and that's the point we try to get right. across. So it's very important to remember that. And so here we are in last year. We had this flurry of storms starting in August and September. So even though we're, the forecasters are anticipating 15 more storms, it's likely to be condensed during August and September because last year in September, there were 10 active storms and then things went pretty quiet as we slid into uh, the end of the tail end of the season into October and November. In fact, once we get past the middle portions of October, things really start to drop off as uh, the water starts to cool down. And usually once we get into November, you only average at least one named storm during that month. And even those are just tropical uh, storms. 
Hurricanes are even less likely. You typically get a hurricane every other year in November. So really, we're heading into the busiest part of the hurricane season here in September and October. And based on these forecasts, we could see another 15 named storms. Yeah, so our main point we want to get across is it's been quiet, yes, due to some other factors we've been seeing across the Mid-Atlantic, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be quiet the rest of the season. We're still heading into and barely into our most active part of the season, so we want to make sure everyone is prepared. And you can always find information on hurricane season on newsforjacks.com slash hurricane, and you can always get updates there. Thank you, Mark, mm -hmm. and we hope you have a wonderful day.